Please be seated. Uh, the dinner is served on the table, and our program is going to start in a few minutes. So please enjoy your dinner first. Thank you. Officially start tonight's event to give a live performance, and I'm sure that it's also probably one of the first live performances that you've, you've seen and heard in the past two years. So let me introduce Mr. Steve Lin. Mr. Steve Lin is a classical guitarist. Okay, let's hold the applause, okay. So Steve Lin is a guitar professor at San Jose State University. He completed his doctorate from New England Conservatory, and he earned his master at Yale School of Music. He has released three albums himself, so he's going to bring three pieces tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to Steve Lin.
What a beautiful and graceful performance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the CIE San Francisco Bay Area 43rd Annual Conference Dinner, Con uh, Dinner Banquet. My name is Christy Wen, and it's my great honor to be here hosting this event. So I hope you will enjoy the night with me as well. So without further ado, let's welcome our CIE San Francisco President, Mr. Brian Penn, to kick off the event by giving us an opening remark. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Brian. Wow, that was very nice music. Yeah, I like to listen to the tone when the finger jump between the string, especially the, 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 the string twist. The sound is very wonderful. And I usually, I play guitar, but I uh, stop because my finger got injured. Okay, <laughs> not too bad. So I changed my hobby. I changed it to balloon dance. And I'm very good at balloon dance, and I like it. But when I meet my wife, she didn't enjoy the balloon dance. And she didn't like when I dance with other lady. <laughs> so I ended up having to give up my second hobby is balloon dance, right? And uh, then I move on to play ping pong, and a photographer, and play tennis. And later on, I joined the CIE as a volunteer. And, uh, and then I actually found out the volunteer in CIE is the hobby I love most. So I'm so, so, so I'm so proud of myself to be a volunteer in CIE for so many years. Okay. Good evening. This is Brian Payne. I'm the president of the San Francisco chapter, and uh, um, I was going to share with you about CIE and what we have done in the past years. So CIE is founded in 1917, 1917 in Cornell University, and the founding member is Zhang Tianyou and the Lin Hongxun. So year 2022, which is this year, is our 100 old, five year old already. And uh, San Francisco chapter, uh, CIE total have a, CIE USA total have a seven chapter, and the San Francisco chapter is the second oldest chapter. And the CIE USA will host three major events. The number one is Mets, and the second one is SATEC, and the third one is AAUI. AAUI is Asian American Engineer of the Year Award, which was introduced in 2022 and in US, and we host the event every year. So how about San Francisco chapter? San Francisco chapter established in 1917, and our founding president is Dr. Da Lin Xu. Dr. Xu is also here tonight. <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank Dr. Xu because of uh, Dr. Xu, that's why CIE tonight we can have our 43rd uh, annual conference in here we celebrate together. Dr. Xu, thank you so much. <laughs> and the CIE will hold year-round event including annual conference and the AEOI program and the technical and the non-technical webinar. So let me go back a little bit about our park few years uh, conference. So year 2019 is our in-person conference, which is in uh, also the same place here. And uh, the keynote is Chi Fu Chen, and the president of Synopsis. And in addition, we have a three awardee, Entrepreneur of the Year, Technology Humanity, and the Community Leadership of the Year Award. Because it's our 40 years anniversary, so we invite all the former president come to join us and celebrate with us for the 40 years anniversary. After 2019, we move on to 2020 and 2021. We know that's a pandemic year, so we don't host the program in person anymore, so we move all the program to virtual. And uh, this year is AEUI program, which is San Francisco hosted. So this is a very big program for us. Traditional, it's a two days program, but uh, since it's a 
virtual conference, so we spread out to six months with the seven programs, including uh, the AUI Speaker Series and the two career fair and the VIP reception gala. And the last one, the biggest one, is AUI Awards Ceremony, which is uh, 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 happened on the uh, virtual, virtual uh, conference. And uh, we award uh, engineers and the scientists and the executive uh, from all the companies, such as like a Boeing, IBM, AT&T, and the GM. And uh, in 2020 and 2021, we total have uh, 20 awardees. And uh, the Jason Huang, which is the CEO and the founder of uh, NVIDIA, was one of them. And uh, because it's a virtual program, so it's totally different. So it's very challenging for us. We spend a lot of time and uh, almost, uh, everybody get together and uh, we run this program. But, and it uh, turned out actually the result is very good because it's a virtual. So more people can join our program from different locations in the area. So actually we have uh, about one, more than 1,000 people join our uh, virtual conference and it's usually more than as usual. Okay, so as today, the event will still post on YouTube and the more people still watching it. So right now it's more than 5,000 people already and the numbers still keep going on. We hope this program have more people know us and share to the uh, entire of the society. So what activity we have done in the past years? So besides the AUI program, we also run a lot of uh, like a technical webinar and uh, also um, oh, health education webinar and uh, financial education webinar uh, for giving our uh, engineer have a little uh, financial concept and also young engineer for the mentoring program and uh, also the interview skill and as well as we just e established the uh, engineer career advanced program give an engineer to find a way and uh, to their goal what their career future will be. So total we have 30 programs in last year and also here I wanted to recognize our coding study group. Coding study group is one of our group we founded in past, uh, three years ago. And they meeting on a Saturday morning so as report from our founding uh, Chair, uh, uh, Jonathan Zhang, uh, total as today, they have a total of 70 meetings already. And this group is still keep going on, going on. We hope they can keep it going on until 100 and 500, then we will give a, a very good, a big celebration for this young engineer for the coding study group. And uh, how do we do this one, make uh, such a, so many great program and uh, among the program? because we follow our uh, procedure and the process. So there's a three principles we follow. We keep uh, our procedure and the process simple, keep it simple, and we keep going, and also keep improving. We know that in the real life, it's, no, it's hard to be perfect. So we keep a review ourselves to find out what's our strengths and the weakness. And from there, uh, the purpose is going to improve in our quality. And uh, going to improve in our quality is not try to approve how, we, how, how good we are. So then we can find a way to make a breakthrough. And even though as much today is the same, beyond breakthrough. So last, we make our program great and serve our community. So moving forward, I also would like want to introduce our AUS speaker series. Our AUS speaker series is we have already run the third speaker series already. We are be our number four speaker series. And this time we are very honored to have our Dr. Li Ming Hu as our speaker. And he will talk about entrepreneurship and the social service. And uh, please join us. And the day is on June 1st. I believe you would like to uh, come to listen what he was sharing uh, his experience for us. Okay. Uh, please check our website and also you can get our e-news very soon. And also we launched the CIE show course and uh, 
Uh, I would like to announce that uh, this year, this time, we are very uh, honored to partnership with UC Extension to join together to offer the AI course program. And uh, the time frame will be in October 22. And the CI show course is our part of our main program. We stopped a couple of years already, so I hope this year we'll come back. And the location will be in UCSC Extension Silicon Valley. So please stay tuned with us and check our website and find out more information. And also we'll send out the news to everybody. So, and I would like to appreciate all our sponsors to sponsor our 2022 annual conference. Without your sponsor, we are not able to deliver such a good program. Because you keep supporting us, we can deliver a much, much better program to serve our community. And uh, also, I want to thank our board member, give us uh, guidance, and uh, our officer, and our uh, CI technical group chair to deliver such uh, so many programs and webinar. And uh, thank you for your time and spending, as well as our uh, volunteer. Also, the important things I want to uh, thank my family, especially I want to thank my wife for, for her encourage and uh, supporting me to be a volunteer at CIE. And uh, um, so she spent the time to take care of my two lovely daughters and also take care of me so I can have a time to serve her community. And uh, because his support, so I'm very enjoy this hobby as a volunteer for CIE. And I think I make a lot of time long, I think I make a right decision because I give up the balloon dance and the join CIE. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I wanna appreciate our uh, this, this, uh, this year conference chair, Jonathan Jiang. Jonathan, oh, okay. So, she make this program uh, from impossible to possible, from virtual to in-person, and uh, on the planning, budgeting, and the execution, and the delivery. That's why we can all here today to celebrate our uh, 43rd anniversary. And uh, the finally, is, uh, I wanna appreciate all the guests here tonight uh, for your supporting and joining um, to our first uh, in-person annual conference after pandemic to make our program more meaningful and valuable. So enjoy today's program, and thank you. Yeah. Hey, Brian, can you stay on the stage? Now we know why you do not have any other hobbies, because <laughs> This is, you are one of the most hardworking presidents that we've seen. So because of that, let's welcome our chairman, Raymond Chen, to come to the stage to present a plaque to President Brian Penn. Let's give them some applause. Thank you. And also, please stay, and let's welcome the new president, Jonathan Jen, to the stage and take a group photo as well. This is the transition period. Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you. Yep, let's give them a, a, another big round of applause. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this way. Okay, Jonathan, it's your stage now. Officially at this point, you are the new president. Congratulations. Thank you, Christy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jonathan John, one of the CIE volunteers. It's my honor to be the next president of CIE in the San Francisco Bay Area chapter. Allow me to take this uh, opportunity to send my sincere gratitude to our outgoing president, should I say that? <laughs> Mr. Brian Penn. 
<laughs> yeah, Brian did an excellent job during the pandemic, uh, leading our chapter. His creativity and the flexibility were especially important during the top year. So let's give it for Brian. After so many years, I still can recall that Brian first introduced CIME to me. It was a sunny day. Brian and I sat down for lunch. Uh, no, his wife, okay, only two, you know. <laughs> he spent a couple of hours talking about CIE and uh, invited me to join. It was where my journey started, and yet it feels like only yesterday. After joining CIE, I had the pleasure to work with so many amazing volunteers and board members. Together, we hosted hundreds of seminars and meetups. I would like to thank all the board members and the volunteers for your inspiration and endurance <laughs> that is putting up with me. Yeah. We're together. Our goal is not for the profit. Our goal, we're not just passing around. We're here together to create something different. Seriously, we share the same goal and vision. Promote and make Chinese American and Asian American engineering community better. So the San Francisco Bay Area chapter is 43rd years old. This is a huge milestone. Only a few nonprofit engineering organizations has this long lasting. I feel humble to accept the challenging job as the incoming president. I will devote myself to CIE with two main approaches. First, be adaptive and creative. We are in a rapid changing world. We will keep ho hosting virtual, in person, and hybrid events. They will cover professional knowledge, soft skills, and other potential topics to reach out more members and friends in the community. We also focus on expanding the membership base to serve more engineers and technical professionals, including the uh, retired person and the young generations. The second approach is connecting and cooperating. CIE will keep serving as a platform among members, partners, and the communities. CIE will build engineering bridges to help all community members develop excellence in science, networking, and leadership. Through working closely with the board members, I hope we can put more absence emphasize on partnering with other engineering communities to expand our voice in mainstream American society. So finally, I would like to thank our partners and sponsors, especially ACE, HNQ Asia Pacific, and the Capital Group, and TSMC. Thank you for your generous support, which makes our annual conference and other events financially possible. I look forward to a fun, adventurous year down the road. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, our next program is the keynote speech. And we are honored to invite State Controller Betty E. She was elected in November 2014 following two terms on the Board of Equalization, where she continues to serve as a voting member. Re-elected in 2018, E is the 10th woman elected to the statewide office in California history. As Chief Fiscal Officer of the world fifth largest economy, E chairs Franchise Tax Board and serves on the California Public Employees Retirement System and California State Teachers Retirement System boards. He serves on dozens of boards, commissions, and financing authorities affecting policies from land management 
and affordable housing to crime victim compensation and educational facilities. As chair of the State Lands Commission, she stewards public trust lands and waters. He led adoption of the commission's first strategic plan, focusing on sea level rise and oil decommissioning, with a commitment to environmental justice and tribal consultation. She spearheaded shuttering the last state oil platform in the Santa Barbara Channel. A native of San Francisco, E has more than 35 years of experience in public services, specializing in finance and tax policy. E leads a team of professionals responsible for financial reporting, audits, and issuing more than 49 million payments a year. Through the pandemic, she has worked to reimagine the State Controller's Office as a workplace of the future. Controller E previously served as Chief Deputy Director for Budget with the Department of Finance and in senior positions for several legislative committees. E serves on the board of Ceres, a global nonprofit organization mobilizing investors to advance sustainability and address climate change. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Betty E. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. It is really, um, I have to tell you, it's very beautiful to look out at all of you and being here in person for the first time since before the pandemic. And I'm really honored to have the invitation to just address a few words with you uh, this evening. First, let me just say uh, I've had the honor of being welcomed by so many of the leaders of this organization. Uh, so I'm, let me uh, first say to uh, Talin Su, thank you. What an honor to really be a part of sharing your vision for what this organization uh, could be and has become and will continue to be. And that is to grow this uh, Asian engineering community to be not just one of pioneers, but to be a pioneers that have global reach and understand that what each of you do in terms of your disciplines are about improving and for the betterment of our globe. So thank you very much for the vision, Talon. I also want to thank uh, the hospitality of uh, Jonathan Jung uh, this evening and uh, Brian Pan. Thank you for your service during the pandemic and during some very, very challenging years. And, um, you know, as I think about um, just what brought all of us here, I wanted to just share a little bit about where I was right before this event. And that was I was in Pacific Grove celebrating and really remembering the families who formed the fishing village down in Pacific Grove, uh, who came to that part of the state to create their own livelihood. And unlike other early Chinese settlements in California, these were not single men, but they were families. These were fishermen, fisherwomen, and in many cases, fisher children. And as we know, that village was burned down. And for many, many decades, into well into the century, in the last century, that story was not told. And so we're now into probably the sixth generation of descendants of those uh, fishermen and fisher people, and now celebrating with a formal apology from the city of Pacific Grove what happened to that village. And I mention that because I think it's a testament to all of you that we are here in this room celebrating your accomplishments because of the shoulders of those who came before us, on which we stand. And I'll just share a little bit about my background. I'm a first generation American, you know, the child of Chinese immigrant parents who grew up, I grew up sharing a sofa bed with my siblings. And my parents, very typical of Chinese immigrants of the time, did not have high educational attainment, definitely no English language proficiency. And so their only choice was to begin a small business and they were in the laundry and dry cleaning business. And back at that time, it was either the laundry and dry cleaning business, a grocery store, or a restaurant. And yet, I can just, um, I, I look out at all of you and just how I think about the sacrifices of my parents, my mother who turned 99 years old last month. And within a generation, is able to see her daughter become the CFO of the fifth largest economy in the world. How cool was that?
But I really wanted to um, share that because I know all of us have come from journeys, whether directly descendant of or many generations of, that have been about struggle, that have been about hard work, that have been about not belonging, that have been about being the other. And I know that also during the pandemic, we don't talk about this a lot, but I do want to raise this because what is phenomenal about organizations like CIE is that you are a community. You're a community that stayed together during the pandemic when our community at large was under attack. When there were instant increases in hateful incidences towards members of our community. And this is why organizations like CIE is really important. Community is really important. And I grew up, certainly, with my parents' laundry and dry cleaning business on the west side of San Francisco, mostly among European descendants. But when I grew up, the definition of community meant that if anybody was hurting in our community, that we were all there to support them. And this is what CIE is about. We're honoring a number of awardees tonight, and I know they feel the same way. Because your theme this year is about Beyond Breakthrough. And Beyond Breakthrough to me means it's not just what you've applied your discipline to. It's not just what the R&D actually results in. But it's also about how do we look at really bringing that to the forefront of every single person around this globe. And when I think about all of the challenges we have here in California, let me just say, as the CFO of California, thank you for not giving up on California. I know we have a lot of challenges here in California, including an affordability crisis that makes it very hard, particularly for our young people, to see a future here. But CIE, I know, supports, supports that future for our young people for our next generation of leaders, for our next generation of entrepreneurs, for our next generation of research and developers. And when I think about also how California is viewed around the world, it is the fact that innovation is born right here. Born right here in this valley, but really born right here in this state. And it is because we all come here knowing that the spirit about what we can do, if we put our mind to it, is limitless. And it's also about the fact that when people look to California, we are one of the most diverse places in the world. And I will say that as I deal with the economy and economic issues for the state of California, and yes, we do have a budget surplus right now, thanks to many of you in this room, I will say that uh, our greatest strength is not our pocketbook. Our greatest strength is our people. It's our diversity. It's the fact that we look here in this state and at every turn, when we are not embracing our neighbors, we are not embracing our brothers and sisters, we know that that is a stain on our community. And so it is the fact that here, our greatest strength in California is our diversity. It is not a threat. And so when we can embrace that, I believe everything is possible. Everything is possible. Now, I also know that with our budget surplus, that there are going to be a lot of opportunities. But I'm looking to all of you to actually help elevate the state beyond our own ambition. Because as government, oftentimes we are the last to change with the times. And for all of you, especially our young people, I look to you to really help guide how government will be transformed in this century and beyond. You know, we are at the crossroads and a convergence of four major events right now that to me are both troubling and hopeful. Obviously, we are working very, very diligently to get to the other side of this pandemic fully. And when I think about the contributions of so many of you in this room to help us get there, thank you. Thank you. I have never seen such progress in such short order in terms of the development of a vaccine. I have never seen such a development in short order, the ability to get information out to all of our diverse communities about how to stay safe and healthy. And it is really through the work of many of you, whether it be through our technology and how we communicate with people, our R&D that continues to happen in the biomedical field, uh, but all of this is to the good. And I also think about how one of the other four events that we are experiencing today is an economy that is not working for everyone. You know, we are here in California experiencing a lot of riches, and yes, we have a budget surplus. 
but it's also the tale of two cities when you think about it, because what the pandemic did uncover is that we have a very vulnerable economy, that many of our sectors, our hospitality sectors, our service sectors, our workers who are barely making a minimum wage are having a very, very difficult time recovering. And so those who have actually done well and are earning more are continuing to do well and continuing to contribute to the well-being of all of California. But it is an economy that fundamentally is not working for everyone. We also are experiencing the effects of global warming and climate change. There is no part of California that is spared now from the effects of climate change, whether it be wildfires or extreme weather events. Uh, we are already seeing our sea levels rising right here in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay. And so, as I think about this pandemic being a global public health pandemic, I don't believe it will be the last pandemic that we will experience. Because when you think about public health as, as the foundation of all health, we really realize that the things that we confronted during this pandemic, chronic health conditions, you know, looking at uh, our water supply and security, looking at food security going forward, all of these things will be things that we will have to confront in terms of pandemics going forward related to climate change. And then lastly, I will say that also, all of us have been hearing across this country the need to come to a racial reckoning. And I will say, it is not just the Black Lives Matter movement, it is the fact that we need to embrace each other regardless of our origin much more fully. I wanna um, just share and, and um, really just tell you about my hope for the future. A couple months ago, I was invited to a hackathon on the UC Berkeley campus, which happens to be my alma mater. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> and I was uh, extremely pleased because all of these students were STEM majors. But what was really wonderful about this hackathon was that the theme of it was civic engagement. How do you use your disciplines in the STEM arena to increase civic engagement? And I will tell you, this is why I am hopeful. Uh, one of the prerequisites to be able to participate in the hackathon is that you had to be registered to vote. And all of the students were registered to vote. But the ideas that were developed during that weekend about how to look at solving some of the issues that we are living already right here. Issues around public safety because our community has really been under attack. Issues around how we are gonna protect our environment because we know that the food that we eat, what we choose to eat, can contribute to greenhouse gas emissions and to the degradation of many, many communities. It's looking at applications that help to bring services to some of our most underserved communities, not just here in California, but throughout the world. But applying so many of the disciplines that many of you have here in this room, but for young people to think about how their reach, how their work can be so focused right here locally, in their classroom, and yet have the great reach of impact around the world was just phenomenal. And for them to see that potential impact and the spark that was in their eye was worth every minute that I spent with them. And this is what all of you do. This is what all of you do. This is the hope that we have for the future of our state. This is the hope that I have for the future of our country. It is the hope that I have for the future of our planet. And as I stand here as your CFO of California, we can continue to lead in terms of what that vision can look like. I want to particularly welcome young people who are here tonight and thank you for being a part of this community. You have tremendous mentors in this room who are going to be sure that your future is bright, but more importantly, who are going to support your endeavors to contribute to the betterment of our world. And as your CFO, I'm also here to tell you, we have historic investments in infrastructure coming from our federal government and also coming from the state of California. And when I think about the combination of fiscal resources, when I think about the combination of fiscal resources with talent, when I think about the combination of intergenerational talent coming together within an organization like CIE, how can you not be hopeful? How can you not be hopeful? And so I'm just thrilled to be here to say that all of us have had journeys where part of it has been about struggle. And what I want to say to you about that is, don't be afraid to give voice to that. Because one of the things that I already am recognizing about CIE is that there are, there's a big brain trust here in this organization. 
But as Asians, and for us as Chinese Americans, we don't do a good job of patting ourselves on the back, of really giving ourselves credit for what we, what we do, not just for our own communities, but for the rest of the world. And I think this is really the unharnessed strength of CIE going forward. And to people like Tao Lin, your founding president, and for those who have come uh, and over these past 43 years, this is what this organization is about. And so I hope that as each of you continue to do the work, whether it's a hobby or whether it's your uh, time that you want to volunteer to CIE, please help elevate the voices of this community about what it does every single day to look at how we are trying to make the world a better place. And more importantly, continue to invest in our next generation. I always say the maturity of a community is in how we treat our young people and how we pave the way so that that journey is a little less difficult for those who follow. And I think for all of you who are here, you share that commitment. I know you do. It's, in, it's our DNA and our culture. But I want you to do an even better job of it and start bragging about it. Because people don't know it. People don't know it. And yet it is what I think the most really outstanding aspect of what CIA has done over the decades that it's been in existence. It's no coincidence that this idea was uh, born you know, across the globe in Asia. It's no coincidence that, yes, the first chapter was in New York, and that there were many, many chapters that now were brought, are brought together under CIE, under one organization. Because what it means is that building a community builds strength. And I hope all of you feel that this is a time that we can exercise that strength that we exercise it for the right reasons, that we are here not only to produce and to apply our discipline and to grow our businesses and to create the jobs and to contribute to the economy, but at the end of the day, given all the challenges that I just enumerated a while ago, we have the solutions to what we can do to create a better future for our children and our grandchildren. And so I am thrilled to be here just to share some of these thoughts. It's what I think about every day in my work as your CFO, and I can tell you the fiscal house is very strong here in California. We've done a great job of uh, just bringing in the revenue, but we need to do a better job of being sure we don't lose our talent to other parts of this country and other parts of the world. It is a challenging time to be here in California, which is why I started out thanking all of you for not giving up on California. This is a great place to be. It was a wonderful place to embrace our diversity, and more importantly, it is a great place to build community Congratulations, CIE, and I express every, every um, best wish for continued success. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Betty, we still need you on the stage. <laughs> what a splendid, illuminating, and powerful speech. So um, let's welcome Brian and Jonathan to be on the stage. And we want to present a plaque to you. Thank you. Let's give them some applause. Thank you, Betty, for being here. And thank you for the powerful speech. And you are so important to us. Thank you.